I'm Ruben and I'm at the Natural History Museum in London. I'm also at the Ice Station Antarctica exhibition with Alex, who's, who put together the exhibition, who also went there for two and a half years. Hello. Hello, Ruben. Why did you want to um, start this exhibition about ex um, children ex and adults experiencing life in Antarctica? Antarctica? Um, well, there's a, there's a couple of reasons, actually. It's International Polar Year, which means that lots of scientists and people all around the world are sort of celebrating Antarctica and the Arctic. We thought it would be a great idea to do an exhibition all about Antarctica. When I was in Antarctica, I was working as a meteorologist, so it was my job to study the weather, measure ozone, pollution, all that sort of thing. When you got the answers to your research, um, what did you um, mainly find out? Well, around Antarctica, on the peninsula, certainly, it's getting much warmer because the temperature was more or less staying the same, which was quite good because we didn't want it to melt. When you do re penguin ah. research, what do you try aim to find out about them? Everybody knows they waddle and stuff. We did this exhibition with the British Antarctic Survey, and they have lots of penguin scientists. And I spoke to uh, another friend of mine, uh, Mike Dunn, and every year he goes down to Antarctica just to study penguins. He's not so much interested in the penguins themselves, but what the penguins eat. Because he can see that if the penguins are eating lots of krill, then there's lots of krill in the sea. But if the penguins are eating lots of fish, that means there's lots of fish in the sea. Are um, penguins, penguins as cute as they are on telly? Oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> Out of all this equipment behind you, um, did you wear any of this kind of things? This is exactly what I wore in Antarctica. I lived in a place that was very, very cold indeed. In fact, the coldest temperature we had was minus 53 degrees Celsius. Can you imagine that? I don't want to. I don't want to. Okay, so up, up here, basically, we've got some muckluck boots. These boots are rated down to about minus 70 degrees, so they'll keep you going when it's minus 70. Uh, we've got... This is basically kind of like a sort of... You know, like a, what a baby would wear, where they have a clothing that's all the way up, to, you know, from the neck down to the ankle, and they just have a zip up the front. Well, this is what it is, but it's for grown-ups, and it's sort of like wearing a duvet. That's the best way I can describe that. Over here, can you see these? These are bare paw gloves, and they've got fur on the uh, on the top of them. And this is basically because you know when you get quite cold and your nose runs, and you get snot coming out of your nose. Well, in Antarctica, it's so cold that your nose runs all the time. So you can use the back of the gloves to wipe the snot away because you can't use a tissue. Do you know why you wouldn't use a tissue? Uh, it would freeze. Exactly. So do you want to come and have a look around the exhibition? What kind of penguin is this? Uh, this is an emperor penguin. So this is the only penguin that spends the entire winter in Antarctica. What's this? Okay, here we've got some penguin vomit. I should say it's pretend, it's pretend penguin vomit. What can you see in there? Uh, like squids and fish and stuff. That's right, the pink stuff, the little pink bits, they're kind of, they're krill, which is sort of like a prawn. And this is the sort of stuff that penguins would eat, and then they vomit them up for their chick. And can you smell that funny smell? That's coming from over here. This is, um, I, oh, oh, it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's the smell of... And we wanted to recreate that effect for you in the exhibition. So if you spin this and have a big sniff, you can get that stinky, fishy smell. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> oh, oh, don't get too close. Don't get too close. Yeah. <laughs> that tiny little spider there, down yeah. there. That's a European sea spider. So he's yeah. about the size of your fingernail, isn't he? <laughs> but this is an Antarctic sea spider. It's 50 times bigger. I mean, that's as, that's as big as your head. It's bigger than your hand, isn't it? Yeah. So... Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's that's one of the effects of gigantism that you get. This is a starfish. Um, I have to say, starfish don't really have an adaptation to Antarctica. Starfish are pretty much the same with the world over. Before you leave, if you close your eyes for a couple of seconds, you can imagine you're there.